Welcome to our ISO GPS mini series. Today I'm going to talk about specifying tolerances. There are a number of different ways we can specify tolerances for our designs. First, let's talk about inspection capability. Ideally, our requirements should be set by what outputs we need, but there may be a need to compromise to accommodate inspection capability if it doesn't affect overall quality. For instance, you may decide to allocate tolerances that contribute to a stack up in different places to accommodate this. Manufacturing process capability. Again, our requirements should be what we need from our assembly, but we are often limited by manufacturing processes and need to take that capability into account. Functional requirements. This is most important. We need to ensure that our assembly will function, we will do what we want, with a specified variation on our parts. Estimation. This can be useful at an early design phase to see if our design concepts are robust. Copying from previous designs. This is often done, but rarely the best thing to do. If our design process is highly iterative, this can be okay, but otherwise it's usually best to revisit our functional requirements. This can be the source of many quality issues if due consideration is not given to setting our tolerances. So, we've decided what methodology we want to use. Functional tolerancing is a useful tool to choose between expense and product quality. Ideally, we'd love to find a solution that's inexpensive and high quality, and tolerance analysis can help us with that. Functional dimensioning relates a product's functionality to the specified tolerances, and it allows dimensions that are critical to the function of the product to be identified. It may also allow dimensions that are unimportant to be identified and their tolerances to be relaxed. For instance, we may have tight tolerances, but in the wrong places that might lead to poor function per our box on the top left. If we expand on this, we might have some loose tolerances with poor function, which can be okay, but we probably want to improve upon that. We can also have tight tolerances and good function, which is great if we're making a quality product, but we'd probably like to have some looser tolerances in some places that we can relax and reduce our costs a bit. Ideally, we want loose tolerances in our parts with good function still achieved by allocating our tolerances carefully and considering our functions extremely carefully. So how do we benefit from using functional dimensioning then? Well, it defines our part based on how it functions in the final product. So that can support DFMEA activities. It can support key product characteristics and also provides the possibility of identifying tolerances that are not important and uh, aren't involved in the functions of the product that we might be able to loosen some of our specifications on. Loosening these can allow lower costs associated with manufacturing, gauging, inspection, and various other items also, perhaps scrappage, rework, and so forth. There are many potential benefits. So if we've used functional dimensioning, your drawings should be complete and defined. Thank you very much.